Good afternoon, Chamber members. For those I have not met yet, my name is Jennifer Thompson. I am your 2020 Chair-Elect for the Chamber Fairbanks, Fairbanks Chamber of Commerce. And <laughs> I am also Marketing Director and Realtor for Hedgecock Group Real Estate. I'd like to ask you at this moment, if you have not done so already, to please silence your cell phones. Please take a moment to review the names of the executive partners displayed on the slides behind me. Executive partners are members that invest beyond their general membership dues at one of our four executive partnership tiers. Executive partners provide a critical foundation for our advocacy efforts and overall success for the Fairbanks Chamber. Let's take a moment to show them our appreciation. On the fourth Tuesday of every month, we take a moment to um, talk about adversity and inclusion, and that is being sponsored by GCI today. So we'd like to give them a big shout out for their sponsorship today. I would now like to ask Jason Kempthorne with Love Inc. to lead us in an invocation and pledge of allegiance. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, all the blessings you've poured out upon us. We ask for your safety uh, for those overseas that are stranded and, and struggling and in harm's way. Uh, we ask for your protection upon our military here and abroad and ask that you pour out your spirit upon them, grant them safety and safe return. Lord, we. Thank you for this day and all that you've prepared in it. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I'm super happy to see you guys in person, face to face again as we are all gathered here. And I'd like to thank Journey Christian Church who has generously offered us this space for August luncheons while we secure a long-term venue for the rest of 2021. So a special thank you to Pastor Derek Dickinson for making today's luncheon possible. Updates regarding our future location will be posted in our twice weekly newsletter that's called The Scoop. So keep your eye open for that and future announcements for September. Our board of directors applications are open and I invite you to join me on the board next year so that we can work together more closely while setting the direction of the Fairbanks Chamber. Directors elected this year will serve a three year term starting in January of 2020 and ending in December of 24. Board members shape the chamber's annual goals and advocacy priorities as well as giving input on new ways to serve our members. The application deadline for this for the seven elected board seats has been extended to this Friday, August 27th at 5 p.m. You can find the application on the Chamber's website, or you can reach out to myself or a member of the staff if you have any questions about the term and the opportunity to have an impact, and I look forward to seeing you there. We have some updates from our committees. Our Government Relations Committee has been working on several issues related to continuing economic recovery of our region, including the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, the continuing housing shortage of the North Pole area, and the legislative special session happening this week in Juneau. Also, in our ongoing effort to support responsible resource development, the engineer, engine, in, Energy, Environmental, and Natural Resources Committee will hear tomorrow about Mill Rocks Resources' proposed mineral explanation of the Tanana Valley. We welcome all chamber members to let us know what issues are affecting your businesses, and you can reach out to Suzanne, our advocacy co coordinator, about whether your issues would make a good discussion topic for our advocacy committees in the future. And now I'd like to welcome Janelle for her CEO report. All right, a little bit shorter than Jen. Okay, um, can you guys hear me okay? Perfect. 
So a couple of updates from the staff perspective. So we had quite a bit going on last week. I just wanna make sure that people are aware of the type of things that we are getting back in the habit of doing now. Northrum Bank held our first business after hours after many months. So we would have loved to see many of you there, but there'll be more, so keep an eye out for that. We also had a ribbon cutting at Life Med Alaska's new hangar um, over by the airport. So that's a big, um, a, it's a good thing for them that they're expanding within our community, that they're offering those medevac services, um, and it's a great deal. So you may want to take a look at that. And we also held our first political forum featuring this Fairbanks City Council and the North Pole City Mayor. So we are in the heart of political season now. It will continue next week with our borough assembly forum, and then we'll finish up with, um, with Tuesday, August 31st, excuse me, the, the borough assembly forum is gonna be Tuesday, August 31st from noon to 1.30. That'll be an extended time period because of the number of candidates who will have uh, with us that day. And then the final forum will be for borough mayor, and that'll be on a Wednesday, the 15th, so tell your friends, that one's on a Wednesday. Uh, we actually have a pretty packed schedule for September, so we ended up needing to add one more date to our luncheon lineup. Couple more things I did wanna mention, you should have a couple of action alert flyers on your table that just came together this morning, so apologies for any typos or strange grammatical errors. Uh, so this is, we are asking for our members to weigh in on the programs uh, that are listed here. So you've got the Alaska Performance Scholarships, Alaska Education Grants, and the WAMI program for uh, medical professionals. So these programs are um, part of training our future workforce and having doctors available for our community. They are on the docket for this afternoon for a finance committee hearing. So if you have the opportunity to call in, the number is on there. Or if you don't have the opportunity this afternoon, there is still the opportunity to, or there is still the option to submit your comments in writing. Uh, and there's an email address on there. So there's some sample talking points on there if you like them. And we do plan to come out with further information about that in a letter. Uh, we just need a little bit more time to develop it. And last but not least, I do wanna make sure that everyone's aware that Leadership Fairbanks is happening this year. We are, gonna, we are planning to be in person in a venue that will allow us plenty of room to spread out. If we do think that we need to have that space between people or use masking, we are gonna have some uh, procedures in place to make sure that people feel safe participating in person. The deadline, the application deadline for that is September 3rd, so that is next Friday. So if you, if your company has sent people to that program in the past, or you know someone maybe who would be interested in developing their leadership skills, but didn't want to do that in a totally virtual setting last year, we are still, we are going to be offering that this year. So um, the link to apply for that is linked on our homepage or on the Leadership Fairbanks page. And you can find more information about any of these things I mentioned at fairbankschamber.org. Back to Jen. Thank you, Janelle. On the fourth Tuesday of every month, our weekly business presentation addresses topics explaining how or why businesses can become more inclusive and diverse with perspectives and our population. And today is no different. We are lucky to have Fairbanks Resource Agency Director of Community Development, Wendy Cloyd, with us to share about her work as a disability advocate and how those with disabilities fit into our Golden Heart community. Wendy Cloyd is the Director of Community Development at the Fairbanks Resource Agency. Wendy joined the team at FRA in 2011 because she strongly believes in the agency's mission and its vital role in the lives of the interior Alaskans with disabilities and their families. FRA serves individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities as well as seniors with Alzheimer's and age-related dementias. I didn't know that. Wendy became a disability advocate in the 1990s after three of her four children were diagnosed with Fragile X syndrome a genetically inherited condition that causes intellectual and developmental disability. In 2007, she, reads, she was recognized by ARC of the Pikes Peak region as Parent Advocate of the Year. 
Wendy joined the Key Coalition of Alaska in 2010 to further the organization's mission of disability advocacy and is a current member of the Key Coalition of Alaska Board of Directors. The mission of the Key Coalition is to educate lawmakers about the issues facing Alaska's disability community. In 2018, she coordinated the first annual Disability Pride celebration in Fairbanks, which champions the idea of disability is a natural part of human diversity. Wendy is a proud alumnus of the University of Alaska Fairbanks, where she earned her degree in elementary education. As Director of Community Development at FRA, Wendy works to educate people about disability with the goal of creating community of belonging in every person. Thank you, Wendy, for being here with us today. That was a really long introduction. I wonder who wrote that. <laughs> As she was reading it, I was like, oh my gosh, Wendy, get over yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much for the introduction, though, Jen. Um, as you heard in the intro, uh, three of my kids were diagnosed with a genetically inherited developmental disability, and it was after that diagnosis that I learned about FRA. I was encouraged to reach out to the agency for support, and um, later I joined the staff so that I can help other families get the support that they need, advocate for disability rights, and educate our community. If you are not, well, you told them about FRA already. We serve people with developmental disabilities and seniors with Alzheimer's, age-related dementias and um, other frailing conditions, and um, we also give support to caregivers of those seniors. So when Janelle asked me to talk about diversity and inclusion, I added the word belonging to that because um, I was really excited to talk about this in relation to disability. Right now in our current world, the immediate association made when you hear the word diversity and inclusion is with vital discussions about race, gender, and gender identity. People who live in the world of disability know that people with disabilities are another marginalized group, a sometimes invisible population. So it is a pri privilege to have the opportunity to bring you just a little bit about my world. And I'm really grateful that I know so many people out here. <laughs> I was really nervous, so it's good to see so many familiar faces, by the way. This is a really big topic to tackle so I'm gonna focus on how FRA approaches diversity, inclusion, and belonging. At Fairbanks Resource Agency, we work to end the stigma of disability and seek to change the way our community and our world think about disability. Disability is a natural and beautiful part of human diversity, and an inclusive society ensures that all people are connected to and act actively engaged in the community in which they live. I placed a bookmark on your table with FRA's mission statement. Mission statements are usually pretty dry stuff, but I wanted to give you FRA's framework for our view of diversity and inclusion. Fairbanks Resource Agency is a nonprofit Alaskan corporation dedicated to assuring that interior Alaskans with disabilities and their families have equal opportunity to be fully included in the community where education, employment, housing, recreation, and family services are available in the same places, at the same times, and with the same respect afforded any member of the community. To help you understand how FRA began and the origins of that mission statement, I first need to tell you a little bit about the history of disability in Alaska. Part of that history is Morningside Hospital. I'm gonna read you straight from their website. It's up there as well. The Morning Star Hospital, the, sorry, the story of Morningside Hospital is a civil rights story. Prior to statehood, there were no services available in the territory of Alaska for individuals who experienced mental illness or developmental disabilities, and these things were considered criminal. Alaskan adults and children were arrested, convicted of being insane, and sent by federal government to live at Morningside Hospital in Portland, Oregon. They were taken from their families and communities by dog sled, train, and boat. In the end, at least 3,500 Alaskans were sent to Morningside between 1904 and the 1960s when Morningside was finally closed. 
Alaska certainly wasn't unique in its treatment of people with disabilities. Historically, having a family member with a disability was a source of shame for some families. Children were often sent away to institutions and family members were hidden away from the world. Attitudes slowly began to change as the disability rights movement fought alongside the civil rights movement. The closure of Morningside Hospital in the 1960s meant Alaskans were sent home, and that is the origin story of FRA. Dr. John Noyes wanted to help a man with developmental disability who had been sent back to Fairbanks, and he had no support services, nowhere, nowhere to go. So Dr. Noyes joined forces with other community members and founded the Fairbanks Rehabilitation Association that became known as FRA, with the goal of helping people with developmental disabilities by providing community-based support services, starting with employment services, putting people to work. The agency grew over time to include many more support services for the community's most vulnerable. And in 1987, FRA renamed itself Fairbanks Resource Agency, which is what you know us as today. I um, put a resource list on your table, so many of the things that I talk about, you'll be able to find on, on that list. But one of the things I put on there is you really should, if you haven't already, on Netflix, watched um, the documentary Crip Camp, because it gives you a really great um, scoop on the civil rights movement or the disability rights movement, and it's really well done. It's excellent. All right, so you've heard FRA's mission, which is to provide support that allows individuals with disabilities to be fully included in the community. So what does that look like? How do we ensure that people are included in their community? Well, we provide services that allow people to be a part of that community. And we do that through the lens of the FRA Promise. Your bookmark shows the FRA Promise on the side opposite of the mission statement. And I have never been able to read the promise without choking up, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bear with me. To support an extraordinary life. See, I can't do it. <laughs> to keep families together, to put people to work, to help our elders age at home, to champion capability, to stand behind independence, to expand ability, to assure a home of one's own, to educate about diversity, to share values and shape attitudes, to improve lives through connections, and to frame our future. I've skipped ahead, but I'm not, I wasn't quite done, sorry. The theme of our 50th anniversary celebration in 2017 was framing our future from inclusion to belonging. We chose that because there is a difference between just being included and truly belonging. You may have heard this quote, diversity is having a seat at the table, inclusion is having a voice, and belonging is having that voice be heard. I get choked up because of my kids, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think about all this through the lens of, of being a parent as well as working at FRA, so. An inclusive society ensures that all people are connected to and actively engaged in the community in which they live, they belong. So one of the lines in the promise was a home of one's own. So let's, let's look at um, what that means to people having a home of one's own, having a place where you can live and you belong. The adults who live in FRA residential homes have met the criteria of institutional level of care, but people don't want to leave their family and be sent out of state to live in an institution, and families don't want to be separated. FRA's residential service program ensures that individuals can receive the needed support to help them live as independently as possible. So for some people that means complete support, 24 seven. For others, it's, it's a little bit less. They may be able to live in their own apartment with a, just a, somebody checking in on them sometimes. In case you're wondering, community-based services are far less expensive than institutional care. To help our elders age at home, the need for senior care in this community is great. According to the Alaska Commission on Aging, our senior population now represents 18.2% of the state population. 
Alaska's senior population is increasing faster than any other state in the nation, with one in five Alaskans now a senior. So we've mentioned before we assist um, seniors with Alzheimer's disease, age-related dementias, um, other disabling conditions to remain in their home for as long as possible. We provide chore services to help seniors maintain their homes, respite care to give caregivers a break. We have an adult day center that provides a supervised haven during the day. At the same time, that program allows caregivers to work or attend to other responsibilities or just have a break from caregiving. They keep families together. The Family Services Program supports families who have a child with a complex medical condition or a family member with a developmental disability who still lives at home. Support such as in-home care and respite care provide hope and help for families. Parents of children and adults with IDD or a complex medical condition face severe and chronic stress, which increases with the presence of behavior problems and extreme caregiving needs. And if you want to know more about that, I'm an expert. To share values and shape attitudes, which is why I'm here today. Besides providing support services that help people be a part of their home community, FRA also works to educate the community. One great example of this is Disability Pride. FRA has joined an international disability pride movement that invites communities around the world to see disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity. No more shame and no more hiding away. In these pictures, you can see when we joined in the 2018 Golden Days Parade, Fairbanks Disability Pride participants wore t-shirts and proudly proclaimed, see me, I'm your neighbor. See me, I'm your employee, your consumer, your friend, and your voter. See me, I am a contributing member of this community. Disability Pride has become an annual celebration. And in 2020 and in 2021, we were virtual, but we can't wait to be in the parade once again. To champion capability. I want to tell you about one of our awesome programs designed to cha champion capability. And Jen smiling because two of the pictures <laughs> are from a first Friday that we held at MAC Federal Credit Union when she was there and she facilitated that. So those are the end cap pictures that you see. FRA's progressive art program supports more than 30 artists with intellectual and developmental disabilities in creating artwork exhibited and sold in professional gallery settings. Making art empowers artists to communicate in new ways, bridging the communication gap that they may experience, and forges connections in the Fairbanks community and beyond. In 2019, artists participated in six local gallery shows, including Celebrating Alaska's Birds at Well Street Gallery, Adaptation, Fairbanks Arts Association's Spring Juried Exhibition, and Fairbanks Arts Association's 34th Annual 64th Parallel Juried Art Show. I got through that one. Six artists also sent work <laughs> to show in a show in New York City. Unable to work at the FRA studio during the pandemic, artists met over Zoom to collaborate and create. And artists showed and sold uh, art in the show 100 times 100 at the International Gallery of Contemporary Art in Anchorage, Alaska, even during the pandemic. to improve lives through connections. Connecting to peers, connecting to the community, connecting to lawmakers is so important. Here are a few examples of how FRA facilitates these connections. On the left, you can see a picture of Guys Group. Guys, they picked the name. So the guys in the Guys Group got to pick the name of their group. They chose Guys Group. <laughs> Guys Group helps men with developmental disabilities explore community activities while enjoying the camaraderie of their peers. You can see Alex giving a high five to the group's leader, Chris, during a visit to Hilltop Cafe. In the middle, you can see the Key Campaign Rally, which is downtown on Cushman every winter. Um, during the uh, legislative session, we have a, a rally. Being involved in self-advocacy is an important part of independence. And each winter during the leg legislative session, advocates and self-advocates fight for disability rights as a part of the annual Key Coalition of Alaska's Key Campaign. On the right, you can see Nan and Bob. They are part of People First, an advocacy group formed 
and managed by people with intellectual and developmental disabilities who are people first, whose disabilities don't define them. People First promotes self-advocacy and equality for all people with IDD. The group encourages the use of people first language, such as saying people with disabilities instead of calling somebody disabled or handicapped, or saying my son has autism rather than my autistic son. So I won't read I won't read you all that, but I really like what they're what they stand for and my daughter is a part of people first. making sure I'm on the right slide. Employment is part of the origin story, story sorry, of FRA, and it is an important part of our mission. Having a job gives people purpose. The Employment Services Program helps individuals with disabilities gain skills and confidence that allow them to reach their career goals. Employment connects us with the community. We contribute to the community as part of the workforce. We buy things, we pay taxes. And did you know that people with disabilities are far less likely to call out sick than their non-disabled peers? Story. Here are a few more images of people working in and for the community. On the left, you can see Carly, Jonathan, and David rolling up wind indicators with the help of their job coach, Alba. This is for a contract with the Bureau of Land Management. They are used by pilots to study wind direction. Top right, Alan is volunteering at the food bank, which is really important to him. In the bottom right, Talon is an entrepreneur who makes window jewelry and sells it on consignment at a local shop. FRA is a proud Source America Ability One program participant. The Ability One program is among the nation's largest providers of jobs for people who are blind or have significant disabilities. It provides employment opportunities to more than 45,000 people, including approximately 3,000 veterans. And the pictures you see show our contract with the Eielson Commissary for Stocking and Janitorial and Janitorial Services in the Child Development Center. According to the Department of Labor, only about 20% of people with a disability are employed, compared with 67% of people without a disability. People are born with disabilities. People can become disabled through an accident or an illness. And in reality, we are all just one accident away from having a disability ourselves. October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month. When I was preparing for today's presentation, I actually went to their website looking for statistics. And this is the 2021 theme for National Disability Employment Awareness Month, which I thought was great. A solution to the current workforce shortage. If you're a business owner um, who is facing a workforce, sh workforce shortage, I would encourage you to contact uh, the Division of Voc Vocational Rehabilitation. DVR helps people with disabilities prepare for and get and keep good jobs. In programs like our Ability One program, we, it has to go through DVR too. So even those people employed through FRA have gone through DVR. So they're kind of our partner, employment partner. Just a final reminder, an inclusive society ensures that all people are connected to and actively engaged in the community in which they live. Everyone belongs. Thank you so much for your time. And does anybody have any questions or comments? I want to just point out that, oh, yes. Okay. That's okay. Yes, yeah, so what she's talking about is our Closet Collections program. So Closet Collections is a donation 
collection service. So we, we go to residential homes. We have bins all around the community and in North Pole and in Fox. We pick up from the women's shelter. We pick up from the um, rescue mission, things that are donated that they don't need. We, and we take all of that to Value Village and they, give, they weigh it. They weigh stuff that's cloth. They weigh stuff that they call missile, which is miscellaneous household goods. Um, and they pay us by weight for what we bring them. If you bring it, if you let us get it or you bring it to a bin or you bring it directly to FRA, they give us a higher percentage of that, uh, of the poundage, I guess, than they do if you bring it directly to Value Village. And it's a really important income stream for us and especially right now, a really important income stream for us because things are a little tough as you might guess. Thanks, Kathleen. I was gonna tell you something else. Oh, I was gonna tell you. Um, most of the beautiful photographs that we have um, in that um, presentation, I just wanted to say that I'm really lucky to have a great photographer on my staff, Alyssa. So I wanted to recognize her for her great work on that. Any, anything else? Okay, well, so thank you definitely to Wendy for doing that. We didn't give her a ton of notice on this one, but um, we appreciated particularly that she was willing to come and talk because of that issue that, that uh, the shortage of, shortage of employees is affecting so many people. So if someone says, hey, I've got some employees for you, they might need a little bit of a different work environment than uh, what you're used to having, but I don't know. We thought that was a great opportunity to bring her in at this time. So thank you for that. Okay, so now it's time for the chamber pot. If your ticket is called, please tell us your name. You all know this. Tell us your name, tell us your business. You've done this before. Uh, so the first prize that we have is an office essentials bag that was donated by Office Depot and Office Max. And that goes to ticket number 599056. 056 are the last three. Oh. 
the AV crew is going to have lots of pens and markers to write with. It'll be perfect. The, the next one we have is a Brie cutting board and a shot glass, and that was from Tammy Randolph from State Farm and Spirit of Alaska. It's a combo gift. And that goes to the ticket ending in 094. 094. Right? And the 50-50 today is $20, and that's going to go to ticket ending in 071. 071. All right. So I, uh, I did, it says, thank you all for joining us today in my script, but I, I did want to personally just say thank you for helping us start this transition back to being in person. I know it's been tough for a lot of people to remember, oh my gosh, I have to leave time to leave my office and drive there. Um, and I know that that has been stopping some people from joining us. But um, if you are aware of other reasons that people aren't joining us, if it's a safety concern, if it's a cost, I don't know what it would be. But please do share that feedback with us because we are looking to continue building that momentum and, and being back in person. So we would just love to hear what we could do better, how we could let people know better, or um, you know what, what we could provide that would encourage people to come back and join us. So we are recording today. We are gonna make that available online, uh, but we would love to have more people back in person because that's what people have, have told us that they want. And um, you know it's a great way to just have those conversations that we've all been missing. So thank you for being here. Don't forget that next week, back in this building, we have our next political forum for Borough Assembly. And we'll just continue on providing great content. So thank you for coming.